Right, welcome to this review video uh, for the new uh, Vigilus Ablaze. This is the second part uh, in this campaign here, and some exciting new releases, especially for Chaos players. Uh, some uh, releases that have been long awaited. Decades, <laughs> it's been a long, long time. Abaddon, uh, and uh, some of the key, some of the core units for Chaos as well. So, regular Chaos Space Marines and so on. Uh, Havocs as well, Terminators, uh, units that, uh, when I reviewed the the, the, the 8th edition codex, uh, the first edition of it when it came out, uh, looking through the models there in the showcase, it's all old, old models and Chaos uh, neglected for a long time. Sort of some decent models here and there, uh, but Desperately need an overhaul for a lot of the units, but Games Workshop have done that now, so perhaps the most exciting time to collect Chaos uh, for a, a long, long time. Uh, some very, very exciting releases and s some superbly sculpted miniatures, and all in plastic and you know, beautiful design. And uh, flicking through some of the images in here, now you're st of, of whole armies, you're starting to see the armies looking. Uh, just a nice finish about them, all sort of united together and of a decent standard. Mostly, there's still some outstanding models as we'll see as we flick through, but um, it is definitely uh, heading in the right direction for sure uh, for Chaos Space Marine. So I've got both books here. I'd, I was planning just a normal codex review just to go through the whole thing, but it doesn't seem to be the way of this one. It seems, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the vast majority of this codex uh, remains the same and is still valid here. Just reading from inside this one. What Games Workshop have done, it seems that they've re-released the codex and then just updated uh, the new units. Uh, basically the stuff that's in here has been transferred into the new codex. Uh, so, And they've marked it here. It's, it looks like uh, the regular codex, but you see this skull here with the two. Uh, just to show you that it is the updated version of the codex. Interesting move here. It looks like uh, they haven't redone the entire codex, but they've done like an updated version. And this could be a move that Games Workshop do, you know, whilst we're within 8th edition, that they sort of keep the codexes but just update them if there's significant, if there is a significant change. So uh, I'm going to go through uh, Vigilus here, uh, and what I'm going to do, I think the best way to do it, I really don't want to just go over the entire codex again. Uh, it's going to be a long. A long, long review, and it means that you're just going to have to be waiting to come to the new stuff here and there. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to review the update. So all of the new stuff that they've put into the codex, I'm going to review from here, so it's all pulled together. Um, so it's going to be like a codex review update, just an updated codex review, uh, not the entire thing. Uh, and then when I go through this book here, I want to focus more on the formations that are now available to see if they're any good uh, in this book. So that's the plan. I think it's uh, we'll shorten the videos and we'll keep it relevant for you. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if there's tiny changes that have taken place. I know the points will have been updated right at the back. Uh, if there's perhaps been small changes elsewhere in the book I'm not sure. Uh, like you know slight adjustments to warlord traits and, and weapons perhaps. I don't think so but there could be small changes that have taken place in there. But I want to focus in on the big stuff, the new units uh, that's the, I think, the main thing that people want to see. So, uh, Games Workshop have sent me these two ahead of time, uh, nice and early, so uh, thanks to them for that. I usually get my Games Workshop stuff from GamingFigures.com, so you can check them out. Uh, they do Games Workshop, but at a discounted rate, uh, and also other uh, gaming systems as well, and with your uh, sort of terrain and paints and brushes as well, all available from GamingFigures.com. So, uh, Vigilus Ablaze then, so we're going to flick through all the pages to give you an idea of the contents of the book and then I'm going to major in on the formations. I think it will be exciting to see what you can go for with this. But um, that's a very, very nice piece of artwork there on the front, which no doubt we'll see again. So it's a big enough book again. This isn't a minor production yet, it's a 200 page book. <laughs> A lot of content to these Games Workshop are really putting a lot of effort into these books here and they're not just thrown together, they have exceptional quality, they are very good. So you know in the miniature setups they've done and the photography superb, so there's a bad in there fighting away. That's the new uh, Primaris releases there as well. 
yeah, that's the artwork. I think that's an incredible piece of artwork there. Chaos Rising. That's the Black Legion fighting away. This is the new characters here surrounding a baton. And they are. They just blasted a hole through. That's Skitari there. Oh dear. And then there's some guardsmen being stomped all over. <laughs> so. What else? Oh, there's uh, Primaris Marines battling away here. At least they're still on their feet here. <laughs> so. The chaos seems to be prevailing here. This is an older piece of artwork. Doom from the skies. The battle in the void. The bridge has sailed. A dark new dawn. It's really setting the scene here for the rise of chaos. The war in the darkness. Retaking the, the hoist. This is uh, Genius to the Cults here against Admech. Cauterize the wound. Just the Imperial forces coming in. Into the swell. The void claw. Force tides, the draining. Some storyline. The Iron Fist closes tight as the Orcs getting involved. They're opening out to nice lot of factions so you can play these uh, camp this campaign, these missions. Infernal machines. Cults and conquests. Vile revelations. That's the uh, Death Guard. Involved there as well. Man and Xenos, this is the Eldar, so loads of options. Here's uh, uh, Calgar, the Penumbral Pact, Distraction Tactics, Eldar against Orcs. Just recently played that on the Plus channel, actually, that one. Top two armies on the channel at the moment. Demise of a Legend. Yeah, all new models here. Look at all of this. Your bad model is huge. He's, uh, he's on the same level as uh, Gilliman. Fallen Skies, Planet and Flames. Aftermath, War Zones, it gives you the whole where each of the factions are. Dontoria Hive Sprawls, it gives you some uh, some sort of uh, cities or terrainscapes that you could then convert into your games. Uh, the Duct and Hive Sprawl. Mega Borealis. The Omniscian Hoist, the Mortwold, Storval, Otec Hive Sprawl, just going to show you all the pages here, uh, the Vaulian Swirl, Calyx Bane, it's great names here, Neo Vellum, the Forces of War, alright, what a showcase, look at this, this is amazing. Calgar versus Abaddon. You can't beat the old classics. Really good. So the forces of chaos. Just the whole structure of them. Forces of the Black Legion. So uh, Black Legion look great now. With the new models, Black Legion look really good. So if you go for, I would say when you paint them the way your Games Workshop have painted them, and that's more of a washed out kind of gold. Not sort of the yellowy gold, doesn't I don't think it looks right with, with black. But if you go for that more washed out kind of gold, the bleaker kind of gold, sort of the burnished gold kind of look, uh, then it looks brilliant. Just as Games Workshop are painting them, I think that gold looks a lot better. Bad in the Despoiler. Forces of the Alpha Legion. Night Lords. This is the great thing, you know, Games Workshop re-release regular Chaos Space Marine squad. It's good news for all of the different, uh, good news for all of the legions. That's what it's called, they're not a chapter, they're, a little, they're broken down into legions. Yeah, it's great, you can apply the colour scheme to those models now. Good news all around, world bearers, iron warriors, yeah. And then some others here, it's great that Games Workshop supply of some alternates here. Uh, the Scourged. Interesting colour scheme. Forces of the Warp. Tons and tons of background information here. Yeah, you've got uh, Chaos Demons getting involved. Forces of the Imperium. It's the Brazen Claws are there, the Predators of Orpheus. And the Howling Griffins. Always like the Howling Griffins. Remember uh, watching a battle report with those, not what, reading a battle report in White Dwarf years ago. Uh, I had a guest player. Uh, on the magazine, and he had a Howling Griffins army, and just looked looked amazing. So, always like those as Imperial Fists, Crimson Fists, nice. 
We've got the silver scars here. All of the main chapters as well. War Upon the Brink. Yeah. That does look good. Does look very, very cool. Imperial Fists. Yeah, versus Black Legion. Nice. That yellow and black. Just again, going back to the uh, Space Marine the movie. Cool. Okay. So this is uh, details about the campaign. Different rounds as well. So it's going to... There's loads of structure. Second phase. First phase, second phase, third phase. Nearless events table. Similar, similar content really to um, Vigilus Part 1. Narrative play missions. Crucible War, so you've got some uh, brand new missions to play for as well. Allies of Convenience. Metal Onslaught. Control the Gate. Schism. Doomsday Device. <laughs> Sounds good. On the bridge. Nice. Cool. This is Echoes of War here. Siege of the Hoist. Of Man and Xenos. The second slur, deadly payload, demise of a legend. Mm. Cool. You got battle zones as well. Uh, Perilous cavern. All these special rules: raging inferno, deadly storm, speedwire, field of nightmares. Battle zone rules. That is a fantastic photograph. Train looks superb. Duct and Hive Sprawl. Calyx Bane. Great Omniscient Hoist. So, loads. Unending. You could take your ages to work for all of these. And great fun. Loads of variety. Dontoria Hive Sprawl. Store Rule. Then, uh, Faction Rules. Here. The Armies of Chaos. So, I will make a, a separate video here to do these, these justice. Yeah, look at this. All of these here. So I'm going to flick through these and check out the other video. I'll also, in that video I'll also cover prayers to the Dark Gods uh, for the Dark Apostle. Yeah, Chaos Space Rings. There's new terrain bits as well. and There's some updates there for Corn. also. There they are. Brilliant. Again, excellent. Look at that setup with the photography there. Absolutely superb. Okay, so this is it here. This is... Uh, it'd be fascinating to see these specialist detachments uh, we'll take a look at next. So, I mean, I was tempted, on a uh, vigilist one, I was tempted to go with a couple of them there. Um, the one for the Eldar, the Wraith Host, I think it's cool. There's one for the Imperial Fist. I, not so keen on, on those for a number of reasons, just didn't quite work out. But uh, we'll see what these ones, if these are any good here. So, Bringers of Despair. If your army is battleforged, you can use the specialist attachment stratagem below. So, bringers of despair, one command point. Use the stratagem when choosing your army. Pick a black legion detachment from your army to be bringers of despair specialist detachment. Black legion terminator units in this detachment gain the bringers of despair keyword. So, you then gain access. We'll, just, we'll follow it down. You then gain access to these stratagems. If your army includes any bringers of despair specialist detachments, you can use command points to use the following stratagems. So, uh, it's number one, brutal uh, subjugation here. Uh, use this stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Pick a, pick a bringers of despair unit from your army. Each enemy model slain by this unit in this phase counts as two models in the subsequent morale phase. Oh, <laughs> morale's gonna melt away, that's horrific. Yeah, pretty good actually, that one. You know, at, at a key point. Yeah. It's okay. That's not bad. Especially if you get to a point in the game where you, everyone's burnt through their command points and there's no hope of any re-rolls, no hope of any uh, auto-pass for morale. You could play that at just the right time and cause a huge amount of trouble with, trouble with that. That's really good. Chosen Enforcers. Uh, one command point, use your strategy with friendly heretic a starter's unit that is within 18 of a bringers of despair unit from your army is required to make a morale test. That unit automatically passes that morale test. Nice. And that's only one command point to the two. So, useful. Useful enough. 
Not too bad. Warlord trait. If a bringers of despair character is your warlord, you can give him the following warlord trait. Chosen of the Warmaster. So reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly bringers of despair units whilst within six inches of your warlord. So that's okay. If your warlord has the Lord of Chaos ability, you can instead reroll hit rolls for attacks made by friendly bringers of despair units whilst within six inches of your warlord. So reroll hits. So that's powerful enough. Yeah, it's all pretty good here. And then Relics of the Legion. Uh, if you have a character in that detachment, then you can take the Force Cleaver, or the Foe Cleaver, which is model with a power axe. Uh, it replaces it and becomes plus three strength, AP minus two, and D3 damage. You have one to the hit rolls for attacks made with this weapon against Imperium units, which is you know half the time for Chaos, half the time you're going to be fighting against the Imperium. So that... Bringers of Despair, who are going to go for like a like a Terminator style detachment, then that is uh, that's a great detachment that one. Specialist detachment, yeah, that's really good. So that's fine. Definitely consider that for sure. Next then, uh, Devastation Battery here. So one command point. Use a strategy when choosing your army. Pick a Chaos Space Marine detachment from your army. Uh, to be a Devastation Battery Specialist detachment. Uh, Legion. Keyword. Chaos Lords, Warpsmith, Havocs and Obliterators in that detachment gain the Devastation Battery keyword. So it's more for your firepower this one here. But you can access that for any of your Chaos Space Marine detachments. Not Black Legion. This one's more open to everybody. So uh, you can take this Warlord trait. Armor Bane, reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by friendly devastation battery units within six inches of your warlord if it's targeting a vehicle. So that's all right, yeah, if you've got sort of heavy weapons, ones to wound you can reroll. So that's all right, useful enough. Uh, then you've got relics here. The Demon's Eye, start of your shooting phase, pick a friendly devastation battery unit within six inches of the bearer. Enemy units do not receive the benefit of cover against that unit's weapons this phase. Okay, so that's all right, and it's it's free, isn't it? So the relic, if you're just gonna have one of them in your force, so uh, ignoring cover with that one, which is all right. Stratagems here, so you've got access to two. Uh, one command point uh, grants wall breakers. Use a stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Pick a devastation battery unit from your army. You can reroll damage rolls for attacks made with ranged weapons by the unit that target buildings until the end of the phase. So that one's specifically for buildings. And then punishing volley. Sounds good. One command point. Use this stratagem at the end of your opponent's first movement phase. If you did not have the first turn, pick a devastation battery unit from your army. That unit can shoot as if it were the shooting phase. Oh. Now, that is uh, brilliant. That's pretty unique, that one. So you, you're going second. You then go into your opponent's movement phase. Is that, yeah, you're going second, you haven't gone first. Now you go into your opponent's movement phase, you just pick a unit from your army and you can shoot. And there's no restriction, there's no minus one, there's nothing, and it's one command point. That is incredibly powerful. That is really good. Now, there's sort of half a chance you're not gonna get to use it in the game because you may end up going first. But uh, what a backup command point that is, or uh, stratagem. So, so far, these are potent enough. And I think Chaos players are going to be very happy with these. But yeah, these are pretty good. Okay, next, Cult of the Damned. So, Cult of the Damned, uh, one command point. Use the stratagem when choosing your army. Pick a Chaos Space Marine detachment. So, again, it's open uh, to different legions. To be a cult of the damned, dark apostles, dark disciples, chaos cultists, gain cult of the damned. Uh, so you can make them one of the characters, the warlord, exultant preacher. So you really go for a nice theme here as well, which is cool. You can reroll fouled, you can reroll charge rolls for any cult of the damned units whilst within six of your warlord. Three roll charges, helpful enough. If that's if you've got a detachment that's sort of an aggressive one looking to charge in, that one's very useful. And then uh, your relic is the Inferno Tome. The bearer is armed with a ranged weapon. 
with the following profile in addition to any other ranged weapons it's armed with. Inferno Tome is 8 inches, Assault D6, Strength 5, minus 1, D3 damage, and it's auto hits on the target. Yep, pretty good weapon. Yep, pretty good. And again, if you're aggressive and plat wanting to get in close, then that will match up okay, even though it's 8 inches, potentially you want to get close anyway. Two stratagems. Ritual Offerings. Use the stratagem, it's one command point, use the stratagem when an enemy model is destroyed by an attack made by Cult of the Damn Chaos Cultist Unit from an army in the fight phase. That Chaos Cultist Unit automatically passes morale tests for the rest of the battle. Okay. Auto pass morale, it's alright, it's okay. Chorus of the True Faith. One command point, use the stratagem when a Cult of the Damn Dark Apostle from your army chants a prayer. If there are any friendly Cult of the Damned Chaos Cultist units within six of the Dark Apostle, add one to the dice roll to see if that prayer is heard. Okay, so a bit of a bonus there. Yeah, that's all right, that one. Cult of the Damned. Okay. Uh, next is Demonkin Ritualists here. So, one command point. Use a stratagem when choosing your army. Pick a Chaos Space Marine detachment from your army to be a Demonkin Ritualist Specialist detachment. Dark Apostles, Dark Disciples, Masters of Possession, Possessed and Greater Possessed units in the detachment gain the Demonkin Ritualists keyword. So, uh, your Warlord trait then, Shepherd of the True Faith. Each time you roll an unmodified wound roll of six for an attack made by a melee weapon by a friendly Ritual Demonkin. By a friendly Demonkin Ritualist unit within six of your Warlord, that attack inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to the normal damage. That's uh, scary, that. Yep. Yep, especially if you've got hordes of stuff. That's uh, terrifying, that one. Six is to wound. You know, I'm just thinking of larger units or units with loads of attacks just hammering out tons and tons of attacks, and it could be against any target. It could be against the Land Raider. And then those sixes that come through to wound will be mortal wounds, in addition to the normal damage. Yeah, with cheap, uh, tons and tons of cheap attacks, that could be particularly frightening. And, you know, even humble units that are, you know, no good, usually, you know, anyone can roll, any unit can roll sixes to wound, and then all of a sudden you start getting mortal wounds, that's really good. Uh, then you get access to the relic here, uh, the burning rod, model with a force stave only, the, the rod replaces the bearer's force stave, and it becomes strength plus three, AP minus one and D3 damage. At the end of each fight phase, you can pick a unit within one inch of the bearer. That unit suffers a mortal wound. Simple as that. Okay, so pretty good. Uh, then, it's two stratagems. Vessels for the Neverborn. One command point. Use the stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Pick a Demonkin Ritualist demon unit from your army that is within six inches of a friendly Demonkin Ritualist Master of Possession. Add one to the strength, attacks, characteristic of models in that unit you picked uh, until the end of the phase. Plus one strength attacks is alright, and that's not bad. If you've got a decent sized unit ready to fight. And souls of the devoted, again for one command point here, use the stratagem at the start of your movement phase, pick a Demonkin Ritualist possessed unit from your army, and a friendly Demonkin Ritualist character that's within six, roll d3. The possessed unit suffers a number of mortal wounds equal to the result. The character then regains a number of lost wounds equal to the result. So you can transfer some wounds across if you're in that desperate situation. So that was okay. I'd say the better one there would be that Shepherd of the True Faith. Six is to get mortal wounds. Would be the decent part of that specialist detachment. So uh, Chaos is doing well here <laughs> with these. Soul Forged Pack. Okay, another one. Uh, one command point. Use the stratagem and choose your army. Pick a Chaos Spacer in detachment for your army to be a Soul Forged Pack Specialist detachment. Warp Smith and Demon Engine units in that detachment gain the Soul Forged Pack keyword. So, say you've got a Warp Smith and three Mauler Fiends and some of the new vehicles, then this is uh, what you can go for here. So, the Warlord trait is master of the soul forges. Add two inches to the move characteristic of friendly soul forge pack demon engines whilst within six inches of your warlord. So you get to move around quicker. It's helpful enough. And then the relics here, the mecha serpents. Model with mecha tendrils only. Uh, the mecha serpents replace the bearer's mecha tendrils and have the following profile. Uh, 
range uh, type melee, strength plus one, AP minus one. Strength plus one, AP minus one, two damage. Each time the bearer fights, you can make one and only one attack with this weapon for each enemy model within an inch of the bearer. Each enemy model. Ugh, terrifying. Whoa, 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 that's scary. Okay. Yeah. Good against, like, hordes and things. So that's not bad. Stratagems. Demon Forge Overdrive, one command point. Use a stratagem to start your fight phase. Pick a soul forged uh, pack demon engine from your army. Double the number of wounds that model has remaining for the purpose of determining what characteristics to use in its damage table until the end of the phase or until the model is reduced to zero wounds, whichever occurs first. Okay. So, yeah, useful enough. It's like Tau, almost, that one. Uh, and then Infernal Engines. You use this, because Tau have a similar uh, stratagem. Infernal Engines, one command point. Use this stratagem at the start of your charge phase. Pick a Soul Forge pack a demon engine from your army. The model can charge in this phase, even if it advanced. And that's very useful. That's uh, very, very useful. So you've got a Maul of Fiends, you've done your 10 or 12 inch move, if you take go for that. And then you can make an advance and then charge. And that can that could be the difference between getting into charge range on, on turn two or not, for example. So very useful, actually, that one. So that's all good. So uh, host Raptorial next. Uh, use the strategy when choosing your army. Pick a Chaos Space Marine detachment from your army to be a host raptorial specialist detachment. Legion jump pack units in this detachment gain the host raptorial keyword. You get access to these two stratagems. Vicious Descent, one command point. Use the stratagem when a host raptorial unit from your army is set up on the battlefield at the end of the movement phase. You can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by that unit until the end of the turn. Great. Yeah, reroll hit rolls. That's for shooting. Yep, and close combat. Nice. Strong. Good strategy, that one. And then Terror Strike. Use a strategy when an enemy unit is destroyed by a host raptorial unit from your army. Subtract one for leadership characteristic of enemy units whilst within six inches of any host raptorial units from your army until the end of the turn. Okay, so, so right. Vicious Descent. Good. Uh, the Warlord trait then. At uh, the tip of the claw, add two to charge rolls made for friendly host structural units whilst within six inches of your warlord. That's fantastic, especially if you're perhaps uh, deep striking down. Wow. That's excellent. Blood angels need something like that. That's really good. Then relics, uh, the Kirop, the Kirop Terran wings. Roll a D6 for each enemy unit that was moved across that was moved across by the bear in the movement phase, movement or charge phase, and a four plus unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. So useful enough. I'm guessing you give that to your demon prince, something like that. So it flies over the top of something and then can cause some mortal wounds. Uh, each enemy unit, so that will be characters, there's no minus here, so even a character is still gonna be four plus in a vehicle. So you could fly over multiple things. Yeah, so that's all right. I could put that onto pretty good use. Okay. So. Okay. God, it's a nice selection here. Fallen Angels. At uh, one command point, use this stratagem and choose your army. You can include sorcerers and chaos rhinos in the vanguard detachment. It includes only. Fallen units, if you do so, they replace their Mark of Chaos, Heretic, Astartes, and Legion keywords with the, with the Imperium and Fallen keywords. Fallen Sorcerers also replace their Death to the False Emperor ability with the Fallen Angels ability from the Fallen Data Sheet. Pick a Fallen Detachment from your army to be a Fallen Angels Specialist Detachment. Fallen units in that detachment gain the Fallen Angels keyword. So you have... Yeah, so i just read this here. It says, the Fallen Howl from the time when a vast swathe of the First Legion went renegade, and they have been a deadly bane to the Imperium ever since. The Dark Angels consider them the worst of all possible foes, for not only do they conceal an empire-shattering secret, but they are next to impossible to catch. Interesting. So, 
Uh, without a trace then, stratagems, one command point. Use a stratagem at the start of the enemy shooting phase. Pick a fallen angels unit from your army that is entirely on or within any terrain feature. Minus one to the hit rolls for attacks that target that unit till the end of the phase. Right, so minus one to hit if they're in terrain, which is okay. Uh, ancient enmity. Use a stratagem when you pick a fallen angels unit from your army to fight with. You can reroll wound rolls for attacks made by this unit that target dark angels units till the end of the phase. Cool. The one to use if you find yourself up against that chapter. And then it says if any Chaos Rhinos are included in the Fallen Angels Specialist Attachment, replace their transport or with the following rule. The model can transport 10 Fallen Infantry models. It cannot, however, transport Terminators, Cult of Destruction, or Jump Pack models. If Cypher is included in the Fallen Angels Specialist Attachment, it gains the following ability Agent of Discord. Enemy units within 12 inches of Cypher cannot use any abilities, mortal traits, or relics that allow them to gain return or refund command points. The range of this ability is increased 18, while there are 10 or more other friendly Fallen Angel units within 12 of Cypher. The range of this ability is instead increased to 24, if there are 20 or more other friendly Fallen Angel models within 12 of Cypher. Interesting one. Relics of Lost Caliban. So the Caliban Steel Blade, that's for a model with a Force Sword only. And it replaces the four sword and grants strength for the user. AP minus three, D3 damage. And then any attacks of a wound roll of a six plus made with this weapon have a damage characteristic of D6 instead of D3. Ouch. Okay. So next one is uh, Legion of Skulls. So. Uh, one command point, use the stratagem and choose in your army, pick a Corn Chaos Demons Detachment that is a Chaos Demons Detachment in which every unit has the Corn keyword from your army to be a Legion of Skulls Specialist Detachment. Blood letter units in that detachment gain the Legion of Skulls keyword. Right. So then you will gain uh, this Warlord trait here, Blood Blessed. Add one to your Warlord's attacks characteristic, in addition whilst their enemy characters within six inches of your Warlord, add another one to your Warlord's attack characteristic. So, useful enough. Yeah, pretty good. And then Relics of Corn. Um, so the Gore, blade, the Gore Plate. Roll 1d6 at the end of the fight phase. If any enemy models were slain by the bear of that phase, adding two to the result if any of the slain models were, was a character. On a 4+, plus, the bearer regains d3. Lost wounds. Okay, so it's all right. And then stratagems. Uh, one command point gets you the brazen skull. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase. Pick a legion of skulls model from your army. Pick an enemy unit within eight inches of this model that is visible to them. And roll d6. If the result equals or exceeds this, this model's ballistic skill characteristic, uh, the enemy unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. Equals to or exceeds. Yeah, so the higher. The better the ballistic skill, the more likely you are to, to cause trouble with that one. And then uh, Red Tide. Two command points for the first time, this one. Two command points. Use your stratagem in your charge phase. Pick an enemy unit that was charged by a Legion of Skulls unit from your army this phase. You can add two to the charge rolls for other Legion of Skulls units from your army that declare a charge against the same enemy unit and do not declare charges against any other enemy unit until the end of the phase. Quite restrictive there. Uh, but there's some bonus there, but it's two command points. That one. So expensive enough. So, Black Legion, I'll just read uh, what it says. So this is exciting. You've got a Legion here where they're going to give you specific and unique relics, stratagems, and so on. All or traits. Really cool. Again, Black Legion players are going to be really happy with this. In this section, you'll find rules for Battleforged armies that include Black Legion detachments. Uh, that is, any detachment that includes only Black Legion units. These rules include the abilities below and a series of stratagems that can only be used by the Black Legion. This section also includes the Black Legion's unique wall or traits, relics and tactical objectives. Together these rules reflect the character and fighting style of the Black Legion. Right. I... I hope that one day Games Workshop... It's a, bit off, a little bit off topic here, but... Uh, one day Games Workshop will... So I want to reignite this conversation here whilst people are tuning into this. Uh, the Games Workshop will do the same for the Imperial Guard regiments. So, um, Talaran Desert Raiders, uh, Mordi Nine Guard, Ice Warriors of Valhalla, these fantastic regiments that are out there that uh, just... Games Workshop need to bring them back. If they did them in plastic, 
<laughs> and then did this kind of thing here. So you say so you got Ice Warriors of Valhalla here. You've got you know unique stratagems for them, relics for them, warlord traits for them. Be utterly amazing. And then all they need to do is release, uh, say, uh, a new infantry squad, heavy weapons team, an HQ, and maybe a, a, a vehicle upgrade pack. Uh, for that regiment, not too much effort, uh, and 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 then these rules here, and you, I think good. See, I know Imperial Guard players that I know, Astro Militar Time players say right, they've got all the caddy models, and that's about as far as their collection goes. And I say, well, what, and I said to them, what about if you, if they, if Games Workshop re-released Mordi and Iron Guard, for example, and plastic, they'd be like, yeah, collect them in a heartbeat, we buy ten boxes straight away. So there's definitely a market there uh, for doing that, and such cool styles. Uh, there with those Imperial Guard regiments. But anyway, back to back to the Black Legion here. I, that's, that's one of the big hopes that I have at uh, the Games Workshop expand out and uh, create some of these uh, not create, it's re-sculpt and re-release uh, these regiments. So Black Legion then, so you've got Warlord Traits, Relics, Stratagems, uh, Warmasters Legion, that's for troops, uh, the usual rules for that. Uh, if your army's battle forged, all demon prints, infantry, biker, and hellbrook units in Black Legion detachments gain the Black Crusaders uh, Legion trait. Then Chaos Cultist units do not gain the Black Crusaders Legion trait. That's mere mortals rule for them. And then the Black Crusaders add one to leadership characteristic of models in this unit with this trait. In addition, if a unit with this trait advanced, it treats its, all of its rapid fire weapons as assault weapons. Great. To the end of the turn. Uh, E.g. a rapid fire 2 is treated as assault 2. So if you want to move quickly and close the ground and play aggressive uh, and you're worrying about your rapid fire weapons, well now they become assault. If you advance, great. So it matches the whole theme of the Black Legion. Uh, their fighting start. So, stratagems. Okay. Let the galaxy burn is the first one here. One command point. Use a stratagem in a Black Legion infantry or bike unit from your army's picked to attack in a shooting or fight phase. You can reroll hit rolls of one for that unit for the rest of the phase. If the unit is a Chaos Space Marine unit, uh, you can reroll hit rolls in s for it instead. Nice. That's only one command point. Excellent. Uh, chosen of the Pantheon. Use this strategy at the start of your turn. Pick a Black Legion unit from your army with the Mark of Chaos keyword that did not uh, dedicate to a, spe a specific Dark God. Uh, that unit has the Korn, Zinch, Nogon, Slanesh keywords to the end of your next turn. Right, it's got all four. <laughs> Crazy. Next, World Killers, and it's three command points. Use this strategy at the start of any battle round. To the end of the battle round, enemy units cannot use any abilities that allow them to control an objective marker. If there are any Black Legion units of your army within three inches of the centre of the objective marker, even if there are more enemy models within range of it. Yeah, so they've made that expensive because it's potentially game changing there, that one, if you play that at just the right time. Relics of the Long Wars, uh, usual paying extra command points for extra relics. Uh, Merciless Fighters, one command point, use this strategy at the start of the fight phase, pick a Black Legion unit from your army. If the unit has more models, then there are enemy models within three inches of it, add one to your attacks characteristic of models in that unit until the end of the phase. An extra attack. Fine. It's all, it's all good here. Tip of the spear. Use this strategy at the start of your first shooting phase. You can reroll hit rolls for the Black Legion unit from your army that is closest to an enemy unit until the end of the phase. If several units are equalised or equal distant, you can pick which one is affected. Okay. Legacy of Horus. One command point. Use this strategy at the start of the morale phase. To the end of the phase, add one to the leadership characteristic of Legion except Black Legion units from your army, also in six inches of any Black Legion units. It's okay, we won't bother that one. And Council of Traitors. Use the strategy before the battle. If your Warlord is a Black Legion Chaos Lord, Demon Prince, or a Bad in the Despoiler, pick up to one Black Legion Dark Apostle, Dark Apostle, and up to one Black Legion Sorcerer from your army. Generate a Warlord trait for each model. Oh, great. Note that these models are only regarded as your warlord for the purposes of the trait. You can only use a stratagem once per battle. No two characters from your army can have the same warlord trait. So, you, okay. So, uh, the Drakari have a similar one, I believe. So, that's a good one, that one. Especially if the warlord traits and so on are good. 
so not bad. Relics then, you get relics as well, which is great. So, uh, the Gorevex Teeth. Oh, Gorevex's Teeth, model with a chainsword only, uh, so it replaces that. It's strength for the user, AP minus three and two damage, nice. And each time the bear fights, it can make two additional attacks with this weapon, superb. Each time you roll a six plus for an attack made with this weapon, the target of the attack suffers a mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. Ouch. That's a really good, that's about one of the best chain swords out there. Really good one. So excellent relic that one. Now uh, the trophies of slaughter. Add one to the leadership characteristic of friendly black legion units whilst within six inches of the bearer. In addition, subtract one for the leadership characteristic of enemy units whilst within six inches of the bearer. That's okay. Uh, the sightless helm. Worsen the bearer's ballistic skill characteristic by one. E.g. ballistic skill two plus becomes three plus. But improve the armor penetration characteristic of all the bearer's weapons by one. Okay. Sightless helm. It's less likely to hit, but it's a bit more on the aim on the minus AP. Yeah, it's okay that one. Angel's Bane. Model with a combi bolter only. Angel's Bane replaces the combi bolter. Range 24, rapid fire 2, strength 5, minus 2, and 2 damage. This weapon has a damage characteristic of 3 if the target is an uh, Imperium keyword. <laughs> Imperium keyword. Nasty. Next one, Cloak of Conquest. Each time the bearer slays an enemy character, add one to the bearer's strength, attacks, and leadership characteristic until the end of the battle. Each time you slay a character. Nice. That's pretty good. And then Spine's Shiver Blade. Model with a power sort. Uh, it becomes plus one, AP minus three, and one damage. And each time you fight, you can make D6 additional attacks. Again, that's another really good weapon, that one. D6 extra attacks. And it's a uh, plus one on the strength as well. That's a really good one. So there's a number of great ones in there. Chainsaw's excellent. Uh, that power sword is excellent. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, Warlord traits then. Veteran Raider. Last within six inches of your Warlord, friendly Black Legion units can declare a charge even if they fell back. Wow. Superb. Great one. Uh, Indomitable. Indomitable. Add, uh, all, all damage suffered by Warlord is halved, rounding up. Another powerful one there, really good. Black Clad Brute. <laughs> Sorry. Add one to your Warlord's strength characteristic. In addition, if your Warlord makes a charge, pick an enemy unit with an inch of your Warlord and roll a d6. On a 4+, plus, the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. Yeah, that's alright, that's okay. These are all pretty good. Soul Eater, each time your Warlord destroys an immune unit, the Warlord immediately regains D3 lost wounds. Brilliant. Uh, trusted War Leader, while your Warlord is on the battlefield, roll a D6 each time you spend a command point. On a 5+, plus, the command point is immediately refunded. Another great one. These are all great here. Uh, first amongst traitors, Death to the False Emperor ability triggers uh, an extra attack and roll of a 5+, plus instead of 6. The models in a friendly Black Legion unit, whilst within 6 inches of your Warlord. Nice. Yeah, really, really good. So, if you have a badden, he must be given first amongst traitors. All of trait. Just this one here. Activating the uh, Death to the False Emperor. And if Harkon, he must be given the Lord of Terror. Uh, from Chaos Codex. Uh, Chaos Base Ring Codex. Right, okay, it's not here. Right, gotcha. Okay. Uh, that's your tactical objectives. Six of them. Yeah, there they are on the move. Yeah, beautiful models now. So this is one of the pictures I was looking at. This all looks nice. Nice characters. Uh, you've got your Havoc sorted out here. Regular Chaos Space Marines. Terminators sorted out. And it's all Plus all the new models that came out there as well. So this is looking like a, a, a nicely rounded off army here. So this is uh, great news, especially for Black Legion, but um, for general, generally speaking, Chaos Space Marines, uh, this is great news for them, really good. Right, so then they give you uh, information here for doing Renegade chapters. So this is brilliant, because I've always, always been half tempted to do this, but now they're giving you some structure to it, which is great. Yeah, really good. 
So I'm not covered too much here. It's just talking about relics and, and uh, traits and so on. Just the usual rules. Shadowy allies. That's your inclusion of Fabius Bar or a fallen or fallen units. The detachment does not prevent other units from gaining the renegade chapter trait. That's fine. Uh, troops. Usual rules for that. There with reavers and despoilers. So we'll cover the traits then. Yeah, I was, I was thinking like inventing my own kind of on here. Red Corsairs then, Raiders from the Maelstrom. Units of this trait can advance and charge in the same turn, superb. Uh, in addition, if a detachment contains three or more units with this trait, uh, that detachment's command benefits are increased by one command point. The detachment command benefits are increased by three. Uh, instead, if it contains three or more units of Chaos Space Springs with this trait. Nice, yeah, it's quite straightforward to take advantage of that one. That's really good. Crimson Slaughter. Uh, a moment's peace. If a unit of this trait destroys an enemy unit, or a d6 and a 5 plus, you gain a command point. In addition, you automatically pass brow tests until the end of the turn. Enough are very strong. These are really good. Uh, the Purge, Bringers of Oblivion. You can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by units of this trait that target enemy units whilst they've lost, that have lost one or more wounds already this turn. It's okay, yeah. Uh, the Scourged, uh, Omniscient. You can re-roll uh, one hit roll for an attack made by a model in, in a unit of this trait each time it shoots or fights. In addition, yeah, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, in addition, when a unit of this trait fires Overwatch, they successfully hit on a 5 plus instead of 6. Superb and irrespective of the firing model's ballistic skill or any modifiers. Wow. Quite rare you get a, an ability to go to 5 plus uh, with Overwatch. And the Brazen Beasts of uh, rend the foe. Each time make a wound roll for 6 plus for an attack made by a model with this trait in the fight phase. During a turn in which it was charged, was charged or performed heroic intervention. The hit resolved is AP minus 4. So rending, yeah, similar to how the Tyranus works, alright. And then death to the imperfect, this is for flawless host. Each time roll a hit roll of 6 plus for an attack made by a model with this trait in the fight phase, it can immediately make an extra attack against the same unit with the same weapon. Yeah. Brilliant, so similar to Goff's ability for the Orcs. So you've got Renegade uh, Warlord traits here as well. So the Red Corsairs, alright, so it's fixed for each of these different legions here. So, host, chapter, so Renegade chapter. Red Corsairs, the Reaver Lord, your army can have one extra relic chosen from the artifacts of Chaos, see, Chaos, uh, see Codex Chaos Space Marines, which must be given to Red Corsairs character from your army that does not already have a relic. This relic must be different to any relics already included in your army. In addition, each time your warlord slays an enemy character, add one to your warlord's attacks characteristic. Pretty good. Crimson Slaughter, Maelstrom of Torment. Uh, subtract one for leadership characteristic of enemy units within six inches of your warlord. Okay, if your warlord has slain an enemy, any enemy models, then until the end of the battle, subtract two for leadership characteristic of uh, enemy units within nine of the warlord instead. That's all right, not bad. And then the purge get blessed mission. Uh, reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by your warlord. In addition, you can reroll damage rolls for your weapons used by your warlord. That's okay. At uh, the scourge, shattering truth. At the start of each fight phase, you can pick an enemy unit within three inches of your warlord. Uh, that unit cannot be picked to fight with in the fight phase until all other units that are able to fight have done so. Cool, that's crippling, that's pretty good. If the target unit has the ability that allows it to fight first in the fight phase, instead fight as if it didn't have this ability. Uh, if both players have units that cannot fight until all other units have done so, then alternate picking which of those units to fight with, starting the player whose turn is taking place. Yes, yeah, so you're struck by that key unit the opponent has, they're about to smash open your lines, and you can then play Shattering Truth and just hold them off for a while at least. That's you know, try and get attacks in, bring them down first. So it's very useful, actually. Brazen Beast, cur carve the runes. Each time your warlord slays an enemy character, add two to your warlord strength and attacks characteristic until the end of the battle. Each time. Cool. Uh, the flawless host. Ultimate confidence. If your warlord generates extra attacks as a result of their death to the imperfect trait, they can immediately make three additional attacks instead of only one against the same unit using the same weapon. These extra attacks cannot themselves generate any further attacks. 
Okay. So, uh, Renegade Chapter Stratagems here. And again, it looks like one per chapter. Yep. So then, uh, the Red Corps says, first of all, more where they came from. Use the stratagem at any... Oh, it's only... It's actually three command points. Use the stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Pick a Red Corsair Space Marines unit from your army that is on the battlefield. Remove that unit from the battlefield and set it up again. Hold it within six inches of the edge of the battlefield and more than nine inches from enemy models. At its full strength. Yeah, that's why uh, it's so expensive in command points, but that is exceptionally useful. Because you could have a really decent unit. I, no, it's Chaos Space Marines, so you are restricted just to your regular Space Marines. It could have been like a big unit, 10, and you're down to one model left, and then that's well worth the points there, to bring an extra mo unit to the battlefield. All life is worthless. One command point, use a strategy from the shooting phase, pick a purge unit from your army that's not within an inch of enemy models. The unit can target enemy units that are within an inch of friendly units until the end of the phase. But each time you roll an unmodified hit roll of one for such an attack, resolve that attack against a friendly unit your choice within one inch of the target it instead. Okay. Uh, burning Demon Heart next, one command point. Use the stratagem at the end of the fight phase. Pick an enemy unit within an inch of any brazen beasts, demon engines from your army. Roll a d6 on a 2 to 4, it's d3 mortal wounds on a 5 to 6. Sorry, 2 to 4. And then a 5 to 6, it suffers 3 mortal wounds instead. Yep. Yeah. yeah, no, nasty enough for that one. Yep, yeah, that's pretty good. Terrifying phenomena. Two command points. Use your stratagem at the start of the enemy shooting phase. Pick a terrain feature that's within 12 inches of a Crimson Slaughter unit from your army. Subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by enemy units within 3 inches of that terrain feature uh, until the end of the phase. Okay. Okay, no, that's pretty good. Useful enough. Uh, prescience. Two command points. Use this stratagem after your opponent sets up a unit that is arriving on the battlefield as reinforcements. Pick a scourged infantry unit from your army that is within 12 inches of that enemy unit. Your unit can immediately shoot as if it was at the enemy, as if it were your shooting faces. Interrupt them as they land, so that's useful enough. Uh, we cannot fail. This is for the flawless host. Uh, unit from your army is to fight with the fight phase. To the end of the phase, you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by that unit. So you get an extra for the ability to reroll attacks. Okay, and then the last page here is actually relics that are available to the Renegade chapter set. Uh, so Maelstrom's Bite for Red Corsairs for Combi Melter uh, replaces that with uh, this one. Maelstrom's Bite. When attacking this weapon, choose one or two, one or both of the profiles below. If you choose both, it's minus one to the hit rolls. Okay, so you go for the bolt gun, which is range 24, rapid fire 3, strength 4, minus 1, 2 damage. And the Melter Gun, which is range 12. Assault 1, strength 9, minus 4, and d6 damage. It's Melter Gun, strength 9. Yeah, must be a special one. The ability is, when using the Melter Gun profile, if the target is within half range... I suppose it's a relic, isn't it? Within half range of this weapon, roll two dice and determine the damage discard the lowest jet, as per usual for that rule. Uh, Blade of the Relentless for Crimson Slaughter. Places the Power Sword. Gives you plus one strength, eight minus three and one damage. And then if the bearer slays enemy any enemy models in the fight phase with this weapon, then from the end of that phase until the end of the battle, roll wounds. Wound rolls for attacks made with this weapon are automatically successful. Wow. Cool. Auto. Pass with that. Pretty good one. Uh, next, Orb of Unlife. That's for Purge. Uh, chapter, model only. Once for battle in the shooting phase, the bearer can throw the orb. I thought it said orc. <laughs> throw the orb of unlife instead of firing any ranged weapons. If they do so, pick a point in the battlefield. This is like a vortex grenade here. Within 8 inches of the bearer, roll a d6 for each unit within d6 of that point, subtracting 2 from the result if it was a vehicle. On a 4 plus, the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. And that's it. The Book of Untruth, scourged, model only. 
Each time an enemy psycho within 18 of the bearer successfully manifests a psychic power, or a d6 and a 5 plus, that psycho suffers a mortal wound. Okay, so a bit of a kickback there. Demon Flash Plate, Brazen Beasts model only. The bearer has a save characteristic of 2 plus. In addition, add one to the bearer's move and attacks characteristic. Yeah, this is very good. And then the last one here, Flawless Cloak model only. That's called Flawless Cloak. Add one to the bearer's attacks characteristic. In addition, increase the range of the bearer's aura abilities. For example, Lord of Chaos, Demiogue, Demagogue as well. So there it is. And as I mentioned at the start, I'd check out the separate video for the brand new units. I'll give them uh, a proper review in that separate video. And I'm planning not to, to read through this entire codex again for review. It seems to be that uh, Games Workshop have simply updated this with the new models and so on. So I'm just going to do a codex update, I think will suffice. And that'll mean you can just see the new models. Uh, the stats and rules for them all condensed into one video and not with all of the other uh, unit entries from the codex uh, going in as well. There it is, that's the, the view or the review for the Vigilus Ablaze. This is part two for this campaign. Uh, so thanks to Games Workshop for sending me a copy uh, of this one and the codex ahead of time. Um, and then just check out gamingfigures.com, they do Games Workshop and other gaming systems at a discounted Right, but uh, keep a look out for that one though, the update for this codex. Uh, thanks for watching and tune in next time.